Hi there, I'm Verified Champion Trader Kevin Davey and today I'm going to talk to you about three absolute musts for successful algo trading. Let's look at a disclaimer and then get started. Let's jump right into it. Must have number one, you need more than just in-sample testing. And if you don't know what in-sample testing and out-of-sample testing and walk-forward testing, if you don't know what all those things are, go to Investopedia. That's a good resource. Go to my website. I talk a lot about in-sample and out-of-sample testing. But make sure you understand it. The key is you need more than just that. And you might say, well, how do I do it? Well, I use what's called walk-forward testing. It's a technique that, one, keeps the strategy tuned to market conditions, which is kind of nice. But it's also a technique that gives you a lot of out-of-sample data results. You want out-of-sample results. Those are more realistic going forward than an in-sample optimized test. I mean, we've all created in-sample optimized tests that just fail miserably. It's because they're optimized. The walk-forward test gives you all the yellow areas I show, and that's out-of-sample data. That's what you really want. It leads to better real-time results. It's definitely a must-have. So let's just compare it real quick. On the left, in the orange box, I've got in-sample testing with an out-of-sample period, and I'm going to compare that to an out-of-sample test with walk-forward. So both of these have out-of-sample, but one has walk-forward, and that's in the blue box. So I'm just going to take a strategy and compare the performance during the out-of-sample or walk-forward period. And you can see the blue curve blows away the orange curve. This doesn't always happen, but many times it does. And it's because the walk forward is more adaptive to the current market and it is a better indicator of a good strategy. It has higher profit, a smoother equity curve, and obviously less severe drawdowns. Now, that's one example of why you want walk forward testing but the key is really you want out of sample testing you don't want an in sample optimization i could pretty much guarantee you that an in sample optimization shown on this chart would be better than both of these but it would also fall apart in real time so must have number one is out of sample results i use walk forward testing to get it must have number two you need to think in terms of probability. Trading's all about probability. You know, it's it's unfortunate if you watch some of the uh, talking heads on TV and they'll say, well, I think Tesla's going up tomorrow. It's definitely going up because of this, or it's going down, or wheat is going to crash tomorrow because of this report. Or They talk in certainties, and they make you they make themselves sound like they're so authoritative that you can't question them. Well, nobody knows the future for certain. I mean, it's crazy. You have to think in terms of probability. Well, there might be a 75% chance the market goes down, but that's not 100%. And you get in trouble when you start thinking in certainties rather than probabilities. So how do you do this? How do you avoid this? Well, here's an example. Let's say we have strategy A has 75% wins and $150 wins, $300 losses. And compared to strategy B, which only has 25% wins, but when it wins, it wins $300. When it loses, it loses 50. And let's just say these are net of slippage, commission, all the trading costs. Which one? Would you rather trade? So I'll wait a few seconds while you look at this, maybe pause the video, do some calculations, and think about it. Okay, so hopefully you've picked a strategy. Now it's kind of a trick question here because if you look at the average for both of these, 
they're the same. So in one respect, these strategies are exactly the same because if you trade them both over time, at the end, you should have the same amount of money. So you say, well, okay, what's the difference? The difference is the path you take to get there, meaning drawdowns, which we're always trying to avoid drawdowns. And when you look at that, they're not the same. So the risk involved with both of these strategies is not the same. The profit's the same, but the risk is not. One way to look at the risk and the risk-adjusted returns is to use Monte Carlo Simulator, which is available on my website. I have two calculations here. I have strategy A at the top, strategy B at the bottom. And if you look at the returns, you can see over time they're the same. Now what these simulations did was actually take the trades for each strategy and ran a random simulation of thousands of simulations to get these results. So like we thought, the profit's the same. And then if you look at your chance of ruin, of getting blown out with a certain amount of money, well, you can see strategy A has a much higher chance of getting blown out when starting with the same amount of capital. And if you look at the drawdowns, strategy A has much higher drawdowns than strategy B. So when you look at probability and you take that into account of what could happen with random trades, strategy B is far superior. So you might not have noticed that unless you ran a random number simulation, which gives you all these probabilities. Here's a related situation. Let's say you had this equity curve. Would you trade it? So just think about, would you trade this, yes or no? Well, a lot of traders like that strategy because it's going up and to the right. It looks like it almost hit a new high. Drawdowns are fairly reasonable. But the problem is there are bad things about it. There's a couple hundred trades originally where it's not making money or it made money and then it gave it back. So it's hard to tell from just looking at the equity curve if this is good or not. And you need an objective measurement. You just can't eyeball it and say, oh yeah, that's good. And that's what this Monte Carlo's, Carlo simulator, you can get it at my website. It will give you the risk adjusted return. And it's an easy, nice, objective way to say, hey, this strategy is good or this strategy is not good. Now keep in mind, it depends on the results that you feed it. So if you fed it an over-optimized over back test, you're not going to get very good results out of it. They're going to be bogus because your results that you gave it were bogus. But when you do things correctly, this can be a very, very powerful tool in your trading arsenal. Okay, so walk forward testing. That was number one for a must-have. Number two was Monte Carlo testing. What is number three? For a must-have. I say try before you buy. And you might say, what? What am I buying? Well, it's just a saying, right? What it is, is incubation, where you have a back test that looks like this. And let's just pretend this chart, this is June 1st, 2014. So let's just pretend you were up all night developing this system. You finished at 3 o'clock in the morning. Should you start testing it and trading it live tomorrow? Well, I actually did. And this is what happened. This was a time where I violated one of my rules. This was a number of years ago. So you can forgive me. I don't do this anymore. But I started trading it, and it was going okay for a little bit, and then it started going down. There was some kind of flaw with the strategy or the market changed or whatever. <clears throat> but if I had watched <clears throat> the performance live before I committed real money to it, I would have saved myself a lot of heartache. And that was my heartache right there. It was bad. It was about $15,000 per contract by going live too soon. 
So now I do what's called incubation. You watch the real-time performance before you commit capital to the strategy. And I survey my students and almost 90%, somewhere in the mid 80s, said it has saved them money. I've done this survey a couple of times and it's always in the 80s to 90s. <clears throat> Some people don't save money and that's if your strategy keeps doing well right after you develop it. Well, you didn't make some money you should have made, right, by waiting. But most of the time, this helps you by keeping you away from those strategies that look good in backtest but don't work. With all these things, it's all about getting off what I call the strategy development hamster wheel, right, where you just keep building strategies and they keep failing and you keep losing money. Use these absolute musts. Start building strategies with walk forward testing. Use Monte Carlo to help evaluate systems. And don't go live with real money right away with a strategy you created. Wait a while. Now, you might ask, well, how can you incorporate these things and start developing strategies correctly? One way, and the way I prefer, obviously, is an all-day workshop I have that's called Creating a Strategy Factory. It is a, an eight-hour class, live class, and it also has about 50 hours or so of bonus videos, and it helps you to turn trading ideas into viable strategies. We go through each of these steps in the process. We have criteria for these steps, of if it's good or not. It's a great way to have a methodical, objective, and pretty time-tested technique to build strategies. I can help you with this by testing the strategies correctly, helping you to think in terms of probability. You take my class and you'll start thinking in terms of probability, and then I'll make sure you only trade real money when you are ready. All that leads to confident trading. And here's just what some former students and current students have said about confidence. They all agree that being confident in your trading is a huge part of successful algo trading. If you don't have confidence in the way you've back tested and developed strategies, you're never going to make it. Or you'll just be extremely lucky. You need confidence in what you're doing. And I can help you with that. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Like the video, I'd appreciate it. I'm Kevin Davey. Have a great day.